हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू शरद चंद्र आई एस अकेडमी वेर योर ड्रीम्स आर आर मिशन दिस इज यथार्थ हेयर एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द केशवानंद भारती केस ऑन कंप्लीशन ऑफ फिफ्टी ईयर्स टू दिस केस इन दिस वीडियो विल बी डिस्कसिंग द बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर डॉक्ट्राइन दैट इमर्ज आउट ऑफ दिस केस देन अबाउट द सिग्निफिकेंस सम डिटेल्स एंड सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ द बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर डॉक्ट्राइन अबाउट द लिमिटेशंस issues or the challenges faced with this structure and then the related cases or the way forward so let's begin this lecture all right so the first thing that we need to see is the origin of this case although it is not of much importance because there are three things to this case one is the history that means that the constitution at that time the time that we are talking about is basically post independence 1950s to almost till the stabilization of our government and nation 1980s and even 90s the constitution has gone through quite a lot of development and the developing forces has been primarily three which is the legislature executive and the judiciary and most importantly these two the legislature and the judiciary why because the parliament has been the one to frame any kind of laws upon the will of the people indirectly through the ruling parties now it has created at time some conflict with the interests of other people and because of that judiciary at the times at times again has made some changes into how this mechanism functions so this has been one of the cases one of such cases which culminated with various other incidents from history and could be seen as a turning point so the previous incidents that took place the various cases the various constitutional amendments the various additions to the constitution whether 1424a or others so that we can see some other time today we'll only discuss about this specifically keshavanand bharati case so who was the keshavanand bharati he was the chief of the adanir math in indian state of kerala so he was the play, uh, main chief principal organ of this adanir math and uh, due to the states land reorganization acts he moved to the supreme court eventually so this case was versus the state of kerala so let's see what was the outcome of this case so right now we have uh, skipped the history and the developments of this case or the procedure of the case we are just talking about the outcome because that is what is important for us and the most important thing from the outcome which is why this case is, is still relevant even after 50 years and will always be more and more so in the coming time is because of the origin of the basic doctrine or basic structure doctrine
बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ वॉट द बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन सो लेट एस सी वॉट इज दिस वॉट इज द बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर एंड वॉट इज द बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर डॉक्ट्राइन सो द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर केम इन टू एक्सिस्टेंस इन द लैंडमार्क जजमेंट इन द केशवानंद भारती बर्स स्टेट ऑफ केरला केस विच टूक प्लेस इन नाइनटीन सेवेंटी थ्री दर इज फिफ्टी ईयर्स अगो द बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर डॉक्ट्राइन इज हाईली कॉन्ट्रोवर्शियल प्लूरलिस्ट judicial creation that has been accepted by all branches of the government and the people of india one thing is keshavanand bharati case curtailed what is the meaning of curtailing curtailing means to reduce and mostly it is used in curtailing something that has been overshot its natural limits unlimited parliamentary sovereignty and started in new interpretive enterprise by recognizing the basic identity of the constitution which may not be destroyed by any amendment so we are talking about the spirit of the constitution through amendments let's say what is the basic issue here the basic issue is that constitution is essentially a text it is let's say text then if via amendments if things keep getting replaced then eventually the whole constitution gets replaced which is not an issue because the indian constitution is very dynamic and needs to be relevant as per the country's needs so this is not the issue that the constitution can completely be changed the issue is that its spirit must remain intact the original idea with which the constitution was made which led to the development of the nation which led to the creation of india the idea of india which has survived years and years so this should not be destroyed so what gives the constitution its spirit and what is the spirit of the constitution this is the this was the issue here so let's talk about this so the basic structure a uh, doctrine has become a thriving aspect of the constitutional judicial review okay so in this case uh, the supreme court overruled its judgment in the golaknath case so this was a previous case it's also very very important it upheld the validity of the 24th amendment act and stated that the parliament is empowered to abridge or take away any of the fundamental rights so this was an important aspect however it at the same time it laid down a new doctrine of the basic structure of the constitution it ruled that the constituent power of parliament under article 368 does not enable it to alter the basic structure of the constitution so both things stand true that the fundamental rights can be taken away however only in the purview of the basic structure not completely arbitrarily so this means that the parliament cannot abridge or take away a fundamental right that forms a part of the basic structure of the constitution let's say the fundamental right is critically abridged to the basic structure that means it is about let's say democracy federalism sovereignty secularism or the basic principle which are guaranteed by the indian constitution then that fundamental right cannot be taken away let's say it's related to land in such a way that the individuality or the dignity of the individual or the citizen is being harmed then it cannot be taken away by any amendment all right so the constitutional bench in this case ruled by a 7-6 verdict that the parliament could amend any part of the constitution so long as it did not alter and amend the basic structure or essential features of the constitution so what is the 
what are the essential features here so the court did not define this and only listed a few principles which are federalism secularism democracy as being its part so we can see there are many other principles as well to the basic structure doctrine let's see what are they one is the supremacy of the constitution so if we are running a whole nation assume this is india so we are running a whole nation let's say there are there is one government sitting here the central government then there are various different governments sitting here and they all want to rule in cohesion that means the individual will of people that they are representing should run in a specific sync then only the country can move flawlessly these all areas are included so then only the country can move flawlessly however there has to be a monarch which when there is a conflict we can go and look up to for the solution so who is the monarch for this india so in the constitution it is written in the first line that we the people of india that means who gives the power to the constitution so the people give power to the constitution so any democratic system essentially becomes a circular loop loop where the people give power to the government or the state through elections the government the state uses the power upon the people the people seek solution on the abuse of this power go to the constitution and the constitution gives a way to via the judiciary all right so it essentially becomes a circular system that means that the constitution should be supreme in such a system which can when there is any conflict give way to the solution second thing is the rule of law third thing is independence of the judiciary so as we already know there are co constituent three branches the legislature the executive and the judiciary so judiciary must remain independent in its functioning and structure or appointments so this is also a double edged sword we can talk about it some day other in another lecture especially about the judges case the first judge second judge case the third judges case and the ncag also ncag case 2015 so this is also a hot topic so we can read about this some day one is doctrine of separation of the powers so this is the same thing sovereign democratic republic this is the basic concept of india that india as an idea as a nation should be sovereign democratic and a republic the parliamentary system of government should exist so this is what we have been following then the principle of free and fair elections and universal franchise and the welfare state so a special kind of socialistic state so this you can read when you read the preamble also all right let us see what are the significance of the basic structure doctrine 
so when it limited the political power the political the times we are talking about were the times of crisis especially during the emergency years so the india was under a heavy handed government the central government and the policies were very conflicting with the desire of the general people that's why the political power had to be curtailed through this various amendments were being brought in so this had to be done so the gulaknath case set limits to political power by subjecting article 368 so amending power to the discipline of fundamental rights then basic structure recognized the basic identity of the constitution so this is all the same thing this is the most important part that basic structure discredits the repeal of the constitution and authorizes a constitutional amendment not constitutional desecration or dismemberment that means you cannot kill the spirit of the constitution second thing is wise exercise of the judicial review process and power so keshavan and bharati merged as an opportunity for the wise exercise of co constituent power of the supreme court so what is the original power of the supreme court or the judiciary in itself is to keep a check and balance on the powers of the parliament and executive that they should not amend keep amending the constitution as per their own will and abuse their power so this is what has happened in this case also that the possibility of abuse of power is no ground for its non conformant that the power should be there with the parliament yes but they can abuse it yes they can abuse it but then there should be a limit for how and where it can be used so that does not turn into abuse one more significance is that last word still stands with the supreme court if there is any in the matter of law in any conflict the supreme court is the final interpreter of the constitution which is the final supreme thing in the india so the court feels that it has a responsibility to do identify and uphold fundamental principles which are crucial to maintaining the integrity of the constitution the decision in the njac case made it compellingly clear that the power may be exercised only within the parameters of the law nothing more and nothing less and the validity of amendments cannot be tested on opinions however strong or vividly expressed so when we are talking about opinions we are talking about the opinions of the parliament or government anything that we see in the judicial cases more often or not is a conflict or a debate between the judiciary and the governments whether you see the governor cases right now or you see the njac cases or even in the past so while all this is a part of the politics that we are not supposed to discuss much or delve deeper into we should read the political sorry the polity point of view from these news or cases so judicial independence is important as the essence of rule of law which embeds both decisional autonomy and institutional autonomy that means supreme court is free to decide things and also to institutionalize itself in the way it wants let's see what are the issues with this basic structure doctrines first of all there is no such provision in the constitution itself that means the constitution is essentially only a text and it does not contain any spirit in itself the spirit is a metaphysical idea that has been given through this case that such and such thing is embedded into the constitution inside itself and that should not be changed even if the text changes the constitution doesn't have anything as such so there is no basis for the doctrine in the language of the constitution second thing there is an absence of the provision that can stipulate that the constitution has a basic structure beyond the competence of amending power that means constitution itself says that i am completely and 100% dynamic can be amended second thing is against separation of power so this principle visualizes a tripartite system where the powers are delegated and distributed among three organs out thinking their jurisdiction each it is inconsistent with the concept of separation of power that means separation of power does not mean separation of power means that uh, these all should function independently and without interfering into each other let's say this is a 
parliament or legislature this is executive and this is judiciary so the thing that processes from here should not go from here at the same time but because of the basic structure doctor and what happens that if there is any change made by the parliament at the same time it has to be ratified by the judiciary then and then it comes out only and it has led to various conflicts here between the legislature and the judiciary so it has led to little inconsistency with the separation of powers both of them are now acting much in either sync or conflict all right third thing is that it's a subjective matter it is seen that the basic structure doctrine gets defined differently by different judges based on their subjective satisfaction or perception so this leaves the decision to decide the validity and invalidity of the constitutional amendments influenced by their personal preferences of judges who can then acquire the power to amend the constitution so if let's say something is being amended or not yes or no there are two only two options or the way it is being amended so the final power rests with the judge who is deciding the case then whether the amended constitution article breaches the basic doctrine or not so if according to him it breaches then it's yes if it does not breach it it does not breach then the constitution is eventually getting amended now the power rests with the judge so the, it's only a transfer of power and there is more discretion applied so it's only a transfer of power essentially from the parliament to the supreme court but it has to be someone eventually we cannot rely on the machine or ai to do it so eventually it has to be a person or a bench of judges so it's not a huge inconsistency because it will eventually rest with someone but this is a point as well all right so let's see other things that limitation of power of elected parliament so this is the major hurdle here that a law made by the parliament can be declared null and void by the courts if courts consider it against the basic structure of the constitution now the parliament is essentially the people or the will of the people because the representatives have been directly or indirectly elected by them only and what the representatives are wanting is what the people are wanting in a sense and if they still cannot do it then it stands untrue or the false that the power to the constitution is given by we the people of india because they cannot change the constitution as per their will and then what is the way forward so it gives power to the judiciary that allows it to impose its philosophy on a government that is formed democratically so judiciary while still completely being a uh, separate to the people or the people's will can still apply its philosophy or individual perception upon how to change the constitution or how to amend or not amend it so this is the major problem here last thing is that uh, there is no clear definition so there is no definite explanation that is why the subjectivity comes so subjectivity is the major hurdle here one more thing is that it leads to judicial overreach such as njac appointment was unanimously elected as an amendment to the constitution by the parliament and passed by the legislature of 24 states in india that means it was the majority choice however the basic structure doctrine used in cases regarded at incidents of judicial overreach like njac bill that means the supreme court denied it in 2015 it said that the collegium system is best and we are not going to change it even if you want it however much so this is judicial overreach so it also needs to be curtailed now who will curtail the judiciary okay let us see some other important cases which are the sankari prasad judgment of 1951 so initially judiciary was of view that the amendment power of parliament is unrestricted because it can amend any part of the constitution even the article 368 which provides the power to amend the parliament so this was discussed in this case in the shankari prasad judgment it is related to article 368 which is itself the amending article of the constitution another case was golaknath case this we talked about it took place in 1967 
so it adopted a new vision to see the powers of parliament that it cannot amend part 3 of the constitution which are the fundamental rights and thus awarded fundamental rights a transcendental position let us see another case which was indira gandhi nehru versus raj narayan case so this was a political case during the time of elections in 1975 after this emergency was also declared so the supreme court invalidated a provision in the 39th amendment which kept the election disputes involved the prime minister and the speaker of lok sabha outside the jurisdiction of all courts as per the court this provision was beyond the amending power of parliament it is affected the basic doctrine of the constitution another important case was minerva mills case versus union of india so supreme court held that the indian constitution is founded on the bedrock of balance between fundamental rights and directive principle of state policy that is dpsp the parliament can amend fundamental rights for implementation of the directive principles so long as the amendment does not damage or destroy the basic structure of the constitution so there are many other important cases also which you can read about and i'll provide a list i'll provide this telegram uh, ppt over telegram as well so this was about today's lecture thank you very much i hope you enjoyed the lecture we'll keep coming on with various other topics as well i wish you a very bright day keep studying and keep growing thank you very much